Hi everyone, I am Matteo Collina and today we are going to talk about the Node.js HTTP client. Um, what can be so interesting about it? Well, what if I could tell you that, um, you know, you could just double the throughput of your HTTP client or even better, uh, maybe, you know, uh, triple the throughput. So, you know, eh, we can do that and we'll see how. A couple of things about me before we start. I am Matteo Collina. You can follow me on Twitter at Matteo Collina. Please, you know, follow me back. Uh, I'm also uh, part of Nearform, uh, technical director there. Um, we are a professional services company based in Ireland. So if you are interested, you know, working for us, check us out. We are globally and remotely. So, hey. Uh, we are also, I'm also a member of the Node.js Technical Steering Committee, so I'm part of the of, of Node, and uh, I'm the co-creator of a few bits and bobs on NPM. I also write every week, and uh, I've taken with a newsletter called Nodeland, so, you know, check us out. Um, anyway, uh, I maintain a lot of open source, including Node, so uh, as part of my activity of both as a consultant and as, as, a, as a maintainer, I tend to, to strike and maintain a balance and feedbacks my learning from uh, when I help companies to when I maintain things in the ecosystem. As part of this activity, I tend to write and build new things when the opportunity arises. So, uh, most applications start as a monolith. Uh, you know, there's nothing bad about talking about monoliths. Most apps start as a monolith. They're great. Uh, and Fastify, the framework framework that I've built, is great for building monoliths. So, um, you know, it's uh, it has almost 900,000 downloads per month and 15 collaborators. We are working on version 4 now and we have a lot of ecosystem plugins. So it's pretty great and it works really well. It's also part of the OpenJS uh, Foundation. So the, I have another talk about it, so I'm not going to spend so much time about, uh, about Fastify. Um, however, once we are build our monolith, one of the hardest questions is how do we start scaling our teams? How do we start scaling? Uh, how do we start? Oh, sorry. How do we start scaling our teams? How do we start improving our system? Well, we'll see that in a second. So um, the uh, what we want to do in those cases is that is we want to. Um, uh, is we want to move to a, what's called a microservice architecture and where we have some sort of gateway that talks to uh, several microservices as you can see in in, in our uh, as you can see in your um, uh, in, in the slide so however this is not just that because in most complex uh, in the most complex uh, enterprises and projects the reality is way, way, way more uh, gets very complicated very quickly because you have several layers of microservices that talk to each other. Now, the throughput and latency that each one of those introduce, it, it's critical for the system. So, and it's one of the most bits that tend to not, tend to be overlooked when uh, opting for a microservice architecture. So, uh, and by the way, uh, Fastify is uh, one of the architectures. Uh, Fastify is great for building microservices. Also Lambdas, by the way. But it's great for building microservices. So please uh, use Fastify when building microservices. Um, as part of this talk, we are going to go through and look at, at these links between the microservices. And now we can use HTTP to provide a debug of, uh, as a, a link between the microservices. Easily debuggable, but also very, very performant. So let's uh, uh, let's dig deep into into this topic. Okay, so um, uh, it's uh, you know look at this because it's if you want to make it fast, it's you know uh, that link can uh, add up pretty quickly because if you add more more levels of latency, you know if that link becomes low, then all all your system is low. So uh, let's take about a little very simple server. This server is an HTTP server virtual node that you know just respond with a given timeout. Easy. 
uh, and the client, the HTTP client for this is, uh, uh, again, it's very simple. You call HTTP.get, but you can also use Axios, Node Fetch, Request, Got, whatever you have. And you can call, uh, and then you can just, you know, pipe it, pipe the answer back somewhere. somewhere. Note that this call, this system, by default, allocates a new TCP socket for every TCP, for every HTTP request. So one new socket for every request, and we get, we dispose it. This is not efficient. Creating a socket, we'll see it. This is not efficient because creating a socket involves several round trips. So on the on our uh, uh, on the on the server. So essentially, when you establish a new socket, you need to do a sin. You need to send a sin IP packet, which then needs to be replied by the server. Now this is a back and forth, and you are actually losing uh, uh, milliseconds here. So if you're on a very fast network, like a server, this is actually not a big problem. But, um, you know, you still have to allocate, you know, file descriptors in your open existing system and so on and so forth. So there's a limited amount of these things that you can use. Note that you get a little bit of, uh, uh, of latency as well. And part of the problem is also due to uh, the so-called TCP congestion window, as shown in this diagram. By the way, these diagrams are from a book called uh, High Performance Browser Networking, which I would highly recommend you to uh, to go and read. So this book, it's uh, so this this um, uh, these congestion windows. What you have is you you can see that if I'm sending a big packet on a freshly created socket. Uh, uh, say sorry if I'm sending a big file on on a freshly created socket, you know I need to do a lot of round trips because every once in a while I need to send an ACK to the server. And this is very important for HTTP for TCP because it ensures that all the packets arrives in order. Um, however, you know the congestion windows grows over time. And uh, at some point, it's, it's with using an algorithm and so on, it stabilizes. I don't want to enter all of this stuff. It's very important, but, you know, outside of this talk. What is important is that if, I have, if my socket has been open for a while, um, the congestion window is higher. And because it's higher, uh, we, can all, we can send a lot of data before sending an ACK. Now, in the example on the right, you can see that if a big, if we have a biggest congestion window, we can only we can send all our data in uh, without receiving an act from the from the sender. This, the, in this way, we are actually reducing a lot, uh, reducing the latency quite a lot. So, in order to ensure the maximum bandwidth and the minimum latency, we must reuse existing connections. Right? Is that you know? It's it's this is a fair assessment. Um, so what it been what we were, we were doing before creating a new connection every time is not efficient. So in a, in Node Core we offer a, a construct to do this, which is creating an HTTP agent. HTTP agents keep keep the connection alive, so it avoids the handshake and maximizes the connection window. It uses the keep alive HTTP 1.1 keep alive. It's a key feature of HTTP 1.1. This is actually critical for TLS connections because on top of the TCP handshake, you will also have the TLS handshake. So if you don't have an agent and you're calling with HTTPS services, you, you are setting yourself up for trouble. Know that this is not the default. So you need to either to configure you need to configure it manually for your HTTP client or to set it or to configure as a default in Node. So it's very important that you do because the difference can be staggering. Now, let's turn the idea into reality. Um, one of the, uh, the service scenario that I'm going to test, it involves doing a, a, a 500 parallel requests to one server, and it's, uh, which in turn does you know, uh, um, another five uh, uh, five requests to other microservices. So essentially, uh, it's uh, um, you know it's, it's a lot of <laughs> it's a lot of requests. Okay, um, 
the server takes 10 milliseconds to process the request and the client has a limit of 50 seconds. So all of this is fictional. So don't worry too much about it, do your measurements. But the difference is staggering. So if you don't do keep alive, you will be in very, very, very huge trouble. Use HTTP agent with keep alive. Full stop. The difference can be enormous. Um, so the key, the secondary question then, after we have seen how we can improve the uh, our client, uh, you know, it's we can use an agent then, right? But can we still can we improve things further? Well, we can actually we can. How? Well, you know, we need to go back into the spec and look what's there. So is there something in HTTP that can allow us to actually, you know? Uh, work at a higher speed. Well, there is. So one of the important bits is this thing called HTTP 1.1 pipelining. HTTP 1.1 pipelining is um, at, allows to send more than one request at the same time using the uh, more than one request at the same time. It's great. So um, uh, minus one thing, uh, you know, all the responses with HTTP 1.1 needs to be received in order. So it suffers for uh, the so-called head of line blocking. So if the first request takes a lot of time, everything will have to wait. However, this it's it's a good technique. It's important to know that this is possible because we can actually use it on our server to server. Note that head of line. We need to talk a little bit about head of line blocking, though. Because if uh, if you're doing this and you start losing packets uh, or you know having a single a slow request, you can actually block all the incoming requests uh, for a while. So be careful on how much you are pipelining. The other important part that we need to uh, to talk uh, before you know making a, a recommendation and you know discussing how and why we can actually improve the speed is the event loop. Um, the, in the event loop, if Node.js event loop, we have um, an event that, uh, you know, when we, we have, a, we have so called events, right? It's called the event loop, you know? Um, events are are not JavaScript though. So we have, you have IO events. IO events are can be produced by the kernel or can be produced by a thread pool. And those events get put into a queue. Once, a, once an event is there, Node.js can uh, fetch that event and process it with JavaScript. That's what it does. That's all, all of it does. And uh, with JavaScript, you can schedule more events to happen in the future, and then those will be queued. Or maybe we can just say, oh, I, I finished processing this event. Uh, please uh, send me the next one. That's what it does. How does this rating to pipelining? We'll get there in a second. But one of the important bits is to tell, to note, how can we make things fast in uh, in in uh, in Node? So in order to make things fast, you need to understand when the event loop is blocked. So uh, if you are doing massive I/O, like in this case, you need to you want to uh, uh, maximize the uh, um, you want to maximize the time that Node.js is doing I/O. This means uh, minimizing the time the event loop is blocked, right? Well, the event loop is blocked when we are executing JavaScript. So in order to make things fast, we need to reduce the amount of time we spend in JavaScript down to uh, zero, if possible. And it's uh, this is the key technique that we have used in, in we can use to improve things, okay? So um, because, uh, because we can uh, because we can schedule things you know with HTTP pipelining um, one of the that technique combined with the event loop logic can make sure that uh, when we are processing things uh, we are you know processing a lot of events a lot of things from the server or for the client and so on and so forth so it's it's important uh, note that uh, it's uh, it's also important to note that 
with HTTP pipelining, you are going to have a lot of econ results. You're risking econ results. So if the other side is truncating your connection before uh, uh, you sent any data. So recently we have changed uh, the Keep Alive, uh, uh, the Keep Alive agent to a logic of LIFO, so last in first out. This means that this reduces the amount of, uh, these tend to use the most fresh sockets so it reduces the risk of them timing out. The, still, the risk is still there though, so the, you need to configure your keep alive timeout well. Um, so, uh, considering all of the knowledge that we have went through so far, uh, I am going to uh, to show you the uh, one of the best things that I that I've wrote in in a while, which is this new library called Undici. How oh, it's und why Undici? Well, Undici. It's an Italian word that means 11. Why 11? Well, uh, one. if you consider the number 11, one, one, then we have HTTP 1.1. So you see, undici, um, which is pretty great. Uh, note that this is totally a Stranger Things reference. So if you don't, you know, if, you, uh, if you're wondering if it's uh, uh, why it's called Undici, it's also, it's totally because of Stranger Things. Because when uh, I was starting working on this library, I ended up writing uh, Stranger Things, which just came out. So, in effect, I've been developing this library for quite a long time. Um, so, how does Undici work? Well, Undici is a new uh, library for, uh, for Node and uh, it keep alive by default, so you don't need to configure a keep alive agent. Uh, it also uh, uh, adds a, a LIFO, uh, it also adds a LIFO, a LIFO scheduler, so by default again. Uh, it does not do any pipelining by default, but it can be configured to do so, and it can create a limited connection. Or by the way, it can also follow redirects. Note that this is really fresh. Um, it's a fresh syntax, it uses promises, you can also use callbacks if you want, but eh, maybe not. And uh, uh, basically you can just, you know, just use the things that you like the most. It's very simple to use. Note that you can, uh, Undici is similar to Node, uh, Node as a concept of agent. And you can configure a global agent if you want to do so. You can configure, for example, the pipelining factors. So Undici is fully capable of doing uh, HTTP pipelining. Don't pipeline too much because you risk a lot. Uh, but you can also configure the number of connection for to each destination if you want to do so. So it's actually pretty great that you can configure all those things. Uh, note that if you're doing if you're using Undici for testing, you might want to disable or reduce deeply reduce the uh, keep alive. So you can actually change a setting and essentially configure the global dispatcher for 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 the thing. Um, uh, you can also use the lower level APIs. So you can create a pool for a target destination. So it creates a pool with a target pipelining and connection numbers. Um, and then you can just call request as it was before. You can create a client, a client map one single socket. Again, you can do all those things, uh, you know, it's uh, one at a time. We also have these interesting methods called uh, uh, stream, request, dispatch, we have pipeline, we have a lot of things, we have a lot of options in terms of uh, integration that you can do. Uh, oh, by the way, I was almost uh, forgetting, we also have support for mocks. This is one of the greatest things that I really wanted to get in Undici v4. This is not in v3, Undici v4 is coming out these days. When you watch this, it might be already get out, but it's still not at this time, so uh, it's still in the release candidate phase, so you can install it with npm i v4.0.0-rc-4, v4 for example. Um, uh, with uh, the mock, you can actually, uh, uh, you know, configure a global agent, a global dispatcher, for uh, that will mock the uh, response. And you can also enable a pass-through mode, so you can only mock certain things. This is really important. Uh, because in um, in order to, to support mocks, for example, in the NOC or in the Node Core HTTP, they have to rely a lot on monkey patching internals, Node Core internals. However, we don't monkey patch. With this, there is no monkey patching uh, happening at all. You can just create one and it will just work. 
So it's pretty, pretty great because you can also use it for testing your libraries. So I really love it. Um, how does this compare? How, is this fast enough? Well, let me show you. So if we are considering just a, 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 very, a, a very simple system, uh, with the system, simple system as before with uh, keep alive. If we don't enable pipelining, there's not much effort here. But if we enable pipelining, we can dramatically and drastically include, increase the number of requests per second that Node Core can send. Why? Well, because we are minimizing the number of uh, uh, round trips to the uh, underlining. Um, to the kernel and the operating system. Anyway, and we are using our socket the best, the most essential. So for me, this is pretty, pretty great. Uh, I also done some uh, benchmarks on HTTP2. Um, using this library called Fastify HTTP Proxy, it's a simple HTTP proxy system that is built on top of Node.js and Fastify that can do HTTP1 to HTTP1, but also HTTP2 to HTTP2, but also HTTP2 to HTTP1.1 and vice versa. So it also uses Undici by default for HTTP1.1, for HTTP1.1, which is great. So you see, it's fast, actually. Uh, and, you know, I'm pretty, pretty happy about this. So, hey, uh, it's actually pretty good. Now, I know that this can be improved quite a lot, potentially, because this is using one single connection, and we might be hitting some sort of HTTP2 limit. So, yeah, yeah, this can be improved even, but I am pretty happy about Unichi. So, um, I am almost wrapping up. I just want to say that I uh, want to recommend to you always use, if you have, haven't watched this talk, you want to just get the most out of it, always set an HTTP agent. Uh, check out Undici v4. Uh, and if you if you have the problem of doing a lot of microservice system and HTTP calls, Undici can, Undici can actually drastically reduce the overhead for your DC with the system. Um, so hey, pretty great. We have a new docs website, so uh, HTTPS uh, and undici.nodejs.org. Yes, it's part of Node, okay? Undici is uh, uh, part of Node.js project now. So it's uh, it's pretty great from uh, uh, from my point of view. Um, we need help. There is, uh, we need people to use Undici and file bugs so that we can fix them, please do that. We can also send PRs. There's a lot of activity. It's one of the most active projects in the Node.js organization. So, hey, pretty neat, right? Um, I also want to uh, uh, to show... Uh, oh, nice. Cool. Here we go. Like... Um, I also would like to show you a little bit of a uh, uh, of a demo of uh, of Undici. So here we go. So we, let's see that we have a server. So this is a server that does a few things, and uh, you know you can see it. Uh, it's it's pretty new, it's pretty new syntax. So we're using the new ESM. Uh, we can actually iterate over the incoming events, incoming requests. We await for the number of uh, to the server be listening, and then we start processing our requests. Pretty nice, right? I uh, I, I pretty I, I like this syntax. So um, then I can actually do uh, the node server, right? So if I do that, I then I can say, for example, I can curl it, and here you go. Yeah, yeah, it actually you know works. Cool. Um, now, how can we use Undici to call to query this server? Well, we can actually uh, open up these are the code which use uh, the global request method from Undici. We extract a bunch of things and then we uh, console log it essentially. So let's see if it works. Cool. Whoa, it seems it's working because we are actually replying that it's uh, uh, it's saying that we. We have a date. Uh, it's a two hundred, and uh, it uh, it tells us that the server want to keep this connection alive for five seconds, 
and it has a, a content length of 11 characters. Those 11 characters are a low word. Hooray! And if you're looking on the server, you see we have access slash foo. So um, it's pretty great from, from what I can see. Uh, going back to, to our slide, um, we can... Uh, I just wanted to, to finish up by uh, pointing out to the fantastic High Performance Browser Networking book by Ilya Grigorik. You can also read it online for free at hpbn.co. Check it out. Uh, I talked a lot about Fastify, so fastify.io. Here you go. And then we have Undici, and uh, there is a guide on the event loop, and finally, Node Clinic if you want to optimize your servers. Um, we are about to wrap up, so I will just uh, thank you very much for having me. Uh, you can reach me on Twitter, at Matteo Colina. I'd also send me an email asking for anything, essentially, life, the universe, and everything, everything at matteo.colina at nearform.com.